Hello everybody and welcome to Sin City Living. My name is Jason. I'll be bringing you today's episode. Now I've been trying to get away from doing the, uh, the intros but I haven't had a whole lot of success with that so I'm going to have to go back into doing that again but I'm going to try and keep this as short as I possibly can. I apologize for, uh, for how infrequently we've been posting videos the last few weeks. been working a whole bunch of extra shifts and then I went in and had, had uh, eye surgery so I've been recovering from that and still am. But hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we're going to get back to our usual routine of having a, a decent number of videos coming out for you guys, especially all those exclusive videos for our patrons. We're really trying to focus on, on giving you guys some awesome content. So for anybody that is interested in that, just go ahead and check the description of the video down below. And I've had, had quite a few questions, uh, even though we've had this system in place for a little while, quite a few questions on how you can... Uh, how how our fans can tip us or show appreciation to us and you can buy us a cup of coffee. We, uh, we set up uh, a, um, a quote unquote tip jar for that. Uh, again, just check the description of the video down below if you're curious about that. Um, otherwise, you know, hope you guys are enjoying things. Please email us with anything strategies you would like to see, questions you may have, videos you would like to see, if you would like to see us do the true crime stuff again, or or just uh, the mob stories on Vegas, or the history of Vegas, or restaurants, um, anything you might like to see see uh, see from us, please shoot me an email, uh, sincitylivinglv at gmail.com. We'd love shooting this stuff for you guys. Otherwise, we're going to jump right into today's video. Okay, everyone. So for this video, I uh, actually want to share something I saw today. The perfect embodiment of why so many people lose even when they catch a fantastic role. Because we caught a phenomenal role. We caught an absolutely unreal role tonight. And it was it was shocking and kind of pathetic with what I saw. Oh, by the way, everybody, live streams, regular live streams are coming. We're going to be doing them every Tuesday. We're going to start off with this coming Tuesday. At uh, This one will be at 2 p.m. And uh, this one's going to be a little bit of a special one that I'm going to do once a month, and I'll give you guys some more information as we go along, but uh, I don't want to hold you up too long. So we caught an hour-long roll today, guys. Hour long. It was actually over an hour. It's about an hour and ten, hour and fifteen minute roll. And by the end of it, once it finished up, one of the things that absolutely shocked us was when it finally ended, nobody colored up. But then we looked up at the rail and we realized why. Most people didn't win enough. Most people, almost everybody at the table, caught a, 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 a once in a lifetime roll for some players and uh, didn't win enough to walk away. They, they, they won, they, they maybe doubled up their buy-in or less, uh, maybe tripled up, you know, a couple of people that bought it for like 80 bucks had maybe 230 in front of them. Um, a few people did book a win and I'll, I'll talk about those. But, uh, but yeah, overall it was, it was shocking to see how many people play without trying to win. Like they're, they're, if, if you catch an hour longer, heck, if you catch a 30 minute roll and you haven't won a significant amount of money, then you're not playing to win. I mean, there's you just you don't have a win condition within your your game. So uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's take a look at what some of these strategies were. Um, so what I've decided with the uh, the live streams, by the way, is once a month I'm going to do a special live stream. So for the next month I'm going to do uh, live streams uh, Tuesday at 2 p.m. and we're going to. Uh, probably start the, the craps tournament thing. If it goes well, then we'll continue doing it. If it doesn't go all that well, I'm very successful after a month, then I'll sh switch it over to Patreon. Now, for the first one, it's not going to be a craps tournament. I would like to have four or five people uh, email me, tell me they're interested in being the players, and we'll, we will do a craps game. I'll roll the dice, I'll give them a bankroll, so on and so forth. Uh, but this very first live stream and one live stream a month is going to be a charity live stream. And uh, we'll, we will uh, donate... Uh, most of the proceeds, I have to pay taxes on it, of course, um, to, uh, to a charity. And um, if you guys have any charities that are near and dear to your heart, please let me know. This very first one is going to be one that's very near and dear to my heart and my family's heart. and something that affects us, and it's, it's going to be a charity for, uh, for autism. Um, so, yeah, this coming Tuesday, stay tuned. And please email me if you're interested in being one of the players. Now. The, the, let's look at some of the more successful ones because, like I said, three people did book wins. Now, I'm going to go in order of the smallest win to the largest win, and they colored up after a few more rolls. Like, 
some people, when they book a big win, will play through two or three more rolls, two or three more shooters, just to see if anybody else happens to shoot for 10 or 15 minutes. So you're not going to get two back-to-back hour-long rolls. It's just not going to happen. But, but uh, you know, if you can catch four or five, 10, 15-minute rolls, you can also make quite a bit of money. So the, the player that, that uh, booked the smallest win, um, they basically, the way they play, they tend to play with improper bets, and they were starting on the $15 level, and it didn't matter what the point was because they were, they were placing the point either on the line or up here. And then they would press as they went. First thing they would do with the six and eight is just fix it. So if something hit, they would collect the $2 and go up to 30 now, this player, they, they, they like to act like they're a big power presser, hardcore player, all that. But in reality, they're not. They, at this point, he would, uh, same bet, probably the next two to three hits on the eight. Same thing if the six were to hit, he would collect the $2. And then same thing, he would same bet the next two to three hits of it, or maybe the next three hits combined between the two before he would press one of them. And that's what's funny. Say an eight were to hit, he would say, press it all the way, okay? Then uh, say a six would hit, he wouldn't press it, he would collect it. Like, are, are you pressing or not? And, and I don't understand why at least small presses. I already collected two dollars, why not the next time around collect a green and throw you in two bucks and go up to 42, and then from there go up to 60 and so on and so forth. Basically the mid-press strategy. I, I don't understand why the, uh, the player doesn't do that. And same thing with the five and nine. Oftentimes they will hit once, collect their 11, and then same bet it a couple times. With the four and 10, they have a tendency to get a little bit more aggressive uh, from the get-go. They'll go up and then the next time around they will probably press it again. Um, same thing with the four and 10. So this is a player that had you know a couple hundred dollar buy-in and uh, uh, they just came at just the right time. And you know, they end up booking a win of uh, a little over $1,000. So you know, not bad, but for an, hour long, for an hour and 10 minute roll, it's honestly pretty pathetic. That's, that's just, it's, it's an insane length of time for a roll. So now let's look at the second biggest win and how they did. And theirs was very conservative and yet it worked for them. Um, so, again, guys, please tune in for our live stream this coming one, Tuesday, 2 o'clock. This one is going towards charity. This is a charity that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, and I will explain why during the live stream. And periodically throughout the live stream, I will uh, go and give some facts about uh, this one, again, is on, going to be with autism. So I'll give some facts about autism that a lot of people may not know and, uh, throughout, the, throughout the live stream. But, again, we're going to play a live game, answer any questions people may have so on and so forth. Um, so please email me if you want to be a player. And also email me if you have any charities that you would like us to do next month or the month after. We, we, uh, we definitely want to be out there for as many people as possible. We, we want this channel to be devoted to, to not just helping people with gambling, but you know, do our tiny little bit to hopefully make the world a better place. Um, so the second player, <laughs> this was actually the shooter. And the shooter had an interesting strategy because they tended to go across eventually they would actually start out with maybe outside especially if the point started out as a five right? and then slowly after seven or eight misses on the six and eight eventually they'd start placing them and uh and they'd end up with with across 130 or 135 across and that's where they would stay at the end of the roll they were still sitting on 130 135 across where they were making their money was they were basically doing they started out with Something like that, and then not too much odds, maybe 50 odds, okay? Well, once they hit their first point, then after that, they would start doing something like maybe 50 odds with, or $50 line bet with 150 odds. Then after they hit that point, then they started doing things like 75 with 200 odds. And then eventually, we're starting to look at stuff like this straight blacks with odds. And in an hour and 10 minute roll, you're going to hit a lot of points. You're, you're absolutely going to hit a lot of points. So even though they were honestly making jack crap over here on the place bets, um, 
you know, they probably made, um, for their place bets, they maybe made five, 600 bucks off it. Because most of these, again, not, <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, 1,500, 1,600 bucks or so. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. I still got that little cold I caught. Um, <clears throat> so they made a little bit off their place bets just by the same betting. <coughs> because they're catching 35 bucks per more on the four and ten. <clears throat> so figure every twenty hits is seven hundred bucks. <coughs> My apologies for to everybody for that. <clears throat> in combination with the cold I caught and the allergies and the wind lately. <coughs> Man. So this player made most of their money on the pass line. Again, they probably made fifteen, sixteen hundred bucks on on their place bets, but their place bets Especially starting out at the green, man, they could have made thousands and thousands and thousands. But they made their money off the pass line. And with their accelerating pass line, the payout started getting pretty good. I mean, you're talking uh, $200 pass line with, say, $500 odds on a four, and they're getting paid 1200 bucks. It's not bad. You know, $100 pass line and uh, $300 on, say, a five. And they're getting paid 550 bucks. And this player definitely hit eight or nine points at least. So once it was all said and done, this player booked a win of probably, I was already off the table at this point when they finally colored up, but they booked a win of, of around 2500 to $3,000 on probably a $500, $600 buy-in. So... Uh, so yeah, they, they played differently, but it worked for them. Definitely played conservative. Now, the biggest win, biggest win came from a player that started out also going across. We tip, would always do the pass line with odds, but nothing super crazy. Because he was like most of the major players, most serious players that are really trying to win money. And he's trying to make his money up here. And he's very aggressive at the lower end. He starts to get a little bit scared higher up, but he's very aggressive at the lower end, and he tends to funnel a little bit. Say a five hits. Well, if a four hits right there, he's going to take it all the way up. Let's go up to 40. Now, let's say a five hits. If he's already pressed the four, he may say put it all on the four. He's definitely been known to do stuff like that. Now, the next time a five hits, he'd go up to a quarter, and then... Either 35 or 50, but a lot of times 50. Now, if that four were to hit, he would throw in the VIG for it. And since that gets paid 120, we'll pay 125 for five. He tends to get very aggressive with the outside numbers at first. Now, once he gets around to about 150 or so, he's, gonna, he's probably going to say bet the next hit of one of the two, especially if they're both up around that level. And he, he, he tends to, to power press, do a mixture of power press to mid press to power press to mid press. And, uh, but then he starts to get a little bit scared near the higher end. So about 30 minutes into the roll, he's got, you know, he's, he, he's got thousands in Israel, a couple thousand in Israel. But at 30 minutes into the roll, he had this right here. He had a seven, $750 dollar four, and he had various other stuff. I think something <clears throat> very similar to this right here. So, he hit something else, and he brings up his eight to six, 600. And, uh, that's when I left the table for a little while. Had had to go uh, go work on another table. And when I came wandering back a few minutes later, he had take he'd gotten scared and he'd taken this down, taken it down from 750 down to 200, and a four rolled. Instead of winning 1,500 bucks, he won 400 bucks. He could have been a table max. He could have been a 2,000 dollars. Have collected. Almost as much as he collected off this $200 bet that he had come down to. And his next hit, and it did hit again, would have paid him $4,000. He also was at 
this level right here. <clears throat> now he did bring his fort back up, so he came down and then didn't really win anything on the next hit because he was pretty much using it to continue pressing. He won a couple hundred. And this is where he stayed. For the next 25 to 30 minutes of the roll, this is where he stayed. Along with that, every time, he's one of those superstitious players, so every time there's a stick change, he turns his bets off. He turns his bets off, so he missed out on somewhere in the realm of three or four thousand dollars on uh, uh, on potential payouts by turning his bets off during stick changes, anytime the dice went off the table, um, anytime he just didn't like the roll. So, now this player booked a win of about eight thousand dollars. They should have booked a win of around twenty thousand um, dollars if they hadn't gotten scared, turned the stuff off, come down. Now a a hardcore mid presser that trans that transfers to a power press once they hit a certain level probably would have won on a roll like this around thirty forty thousand dollars, and uh, other people you know a power presser would have won. Sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars. I've actually seen a power presser catch a very similar roll and win seventy thousand dollars. Now here's the thing: that we had three people that booked the win. There were a whole bunch of other players on the table. Every single one of them continued to play afterwards because they didn't book a big enough win. If an hour and a half, or an hour and a half, an hour and ten, hour and fifteen minute roll is not enough rolls of the dice and hits on all the numbers for them to book a win, I am very curious to what is enough for them to book a win. There was one kid that his entire strategy was about every 10th roll, he would do a $15 six or eight. If it hit, he would take it down. So he would take his $17 about every 10th, about, and which he would collect about every, you know, he placed about every 10th roll. It'd take four or five hits sometimes for it to pay off. So I think he hit that three times. Then he would do 50 or $60 in various silly hops. And occasionally one of them would hit and it would be an 80 and down if he took his action down, which meant he got his 50 or $60 back plus 25 to 30 bucks, or 20 to 30 bucks. It, it was absolutely pathetic. After an hour, he had his original starting buy-in plus two greens. By the time the roll ended, he was actually back to even. He'd lost the two greens as well. Uh, his little silly hop thing is something I'm going to feature in another video as well. So yeah, there you go. This is this is like living proof of of how people don't really think about their strategies and how they play. I mean, why why can you catch an hour long roll and not book a win? I mean, it's just it's it's insane to me. It's just absolutely crazy. I just don't do not do not do not understand it. But everybody plays in a different way. So I hope you guys find this interesting, illuminating, enlightening, or at least just plain fun. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye now. Thank you everybody for watching today's video and as promised a little bit more detail on things that we are working on. So again we want to uh, we want to continue trying to expand the channel. We're really hoping to be add, to be able to add roulette as soon as possible and then some video kino, video slots, stuff along those lines. Um, unfortunately it ate up almost all of our cash um, paying off all of our bills during the month of January, January while we were down. And uh, now that the holidays have ended, um, YouTube's uh, payouts have dropped significantly. So uh, we're kind of treading water here uh, as far as all that goes. Do have a lot of things we want to add, though. Not just those, those things, those, those additional games, and hopefully some carnival games and such, such like that, but the live streams. The biggest problem right now with the live streams is with three jobs combined between the two of us, four if I include the, the 20 to 30 hours a week I'm putting into the YouTube channel. Um, it's very, very difficult for me to have a day and time that I can commit to doing the live stream every single week because we also have our, our very young child to, to take care of. But I'm trying to figure that out. I'm, I'm thinking it's probably going to end up being on, on Monday nights or Tuesday afternoons or possibly both. I intend to do at least one live stream exclusively for our patrons and then another one on the YouTube channel. So possibly both both days. Um, we also have a few other things that, that we really want to attempt to move forward on. I'm just running into to either time or skill set issues. I do want to eventually have a, a website going for us. Um, I did used to program websites a long, over a decade ago. A lot of things have changed and I just don't have that time. Um, and uh, 
Uh, not a whole lot of knowledge on the current state of of um, building websites, hosting site. You know what what sites can host and and. Uh, uh, how to build up, you know, the e-commerce stuff. So if anybody has any skill sets along those lines and would like to answer some questions uh, or just help us out, shoot us an email, SinCityLivingLV at gmail.com. Um, also, I really hope to be able to start adding some some uh, fairly ex some exclusive stuff from Sin City Living, uh, logoed shirts, hats. I'm looking to get uh, custom dice made, even custom, custom layouts made, although those would be pretty expensive. Um, but... I know zero about e-commerce and drop shipping and uh, anything along those lines. So if you have any skill or knowledge in that area, please email me. Uh, I would I would love to ask you some questions and uh, see if uh, see if you can answer answer a few to help me figure out how to get that going. Um, same thing with uh, with designing our logos. You know, I, I I had the logo had some logos designed, very very small logos, unfortunately, not big enough to blow up to put on T-shirts and stuff like that. And again, I know next to nothing. Not next to. I know nothing about um, logo design, graphic design, any kind of websites that could that could do it. Um, I I literally know nothing. So if you have any skill or knowledge in that area, also please email me, and you're willing to ask, answer some questions. Please. Email me and uh, and let me know. I uh, uh, I'll admit I don't even know where to start as far as asking some questions, but I'm sure I'll, I'll ask a few and that'll trigger a few more, so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, there's that, and and uh, of course we do hope to continue to improve our AV setup. But I am an AV moron, so also right there, if you have any skill sets or knowledge in that area. Please email me and, and are willing to answer some questions. Please email me and uh, and let me know. We would love the help. Uh, otherwise, again, thank you everybody for watching, and we're very excited to continue bringing you our videos. Bye now.